Our last session of the day is about um, diversion, pro it's titled Diversion Programs and or Workouts and Litigation Avoidance. Um, Kathy Martin from Neighborhood Legal Assistance and I are going to um, talk about first just the basics of what is a diversion program and some of the components and options for diversion programs around the state. And then um, Kathy's going to cover the process for setting up um, such a program and the role of the respective role of lawyers and housing counselors within the program. Um, uh, a diversion program is a special, basically a special procedure for dealing with foreclosure cases that are filed in court. Um, and, and the reason why it's called diversion program is the idea is to divert them from the usual course, which is either litigation or default judgment and marching along towards sheriff sale, to kind of take them out of that usual track um, and, and give the parties a chance to work things out under the supervision of the court um, before the case can move forward and to see if there's any way for the parties to avoid the outcome of a sheriff sale. Um, from our perspective, we're usually trying to save the home, so that would be through a modification or other, um, or forbearance or um, other kind of workout. Um, but there are, are other options um, that can be considered through a diversion program that'll, if the person is interested in selling, maybe more time to sell the house or, um, or transfer title to the house if it's an inheritance situation, whatever the case may be. Um, Philadelphia was the first to set up a diversion program in the spring of 2008 and um, followed by Allegheny County. And now there are 14 um, judicial districts in Pennsylvania that have diversion programs. Um, and uh, at least two or three more um, districts are in the process of working on setting up programs of their own. Um, we were involved in an event um, in October for um, President judges and prothonotaries of the various um, district courts, or the, uh, the um, common pleas, <laughs> various common pleas courts in Pennsylvania to strongly encourage them um, to set up their own diversion programs um, and explain how it can be done and tailored to the needs of different counties. Um, obviously, we're from two largest um, counties population wise in Pennsylvania, but um, there programs are in effect in a range of counties and they can be tailored to meet the needs of different counties. Um, in the materials, I've included synopses of all the 14 counties that we know of. One of them um, is fairly new, so we didn't have the materials yet, um, but it's named. And uh, the materials include when the program became effective and where you can find um, the, it's usually set up by administrative order, where you could find the administrative order. Um, and I've also included more detailed materials from four local programs um, from our two counties. Um, Philadelphia, I've included notices and the form notices and the orders that the court uses. Um, in Allegheny County, we have the administrative order setting up the program um, notice, scheduling order, and the website. And then we also have um, notice and orders from Lehigh County, which is um, a fairly, I've included that as an example of a fairly simple program that was just um, set up by a judge with, with input from the parties, but without a sort of implementing administrative order and then orders, notices, and financial forms from Northampton County as well. So this is just a um, somewhat representative sample of materials. Um, um, but yeah. Let me point out that there is a typo in the one for Allegheny County on page 223. Uh, this was the notice that they used, but the phone number's wrong. It should be an 866 number, not an 800 number. So the court has corrected it, but unfortunately, this is floating out there. Um, so just change that on page 223. Mm -hmm. And while you're looking at it, this is um, an example of the important notice that all the programs include some variation um, on this notice um, to advise homeowners of the existence of the program, try to get them to participate. Um, as I mentioned, the goal is, is workout or other avoidance of a sheriff's sale. Um, and all the programs cover essentially owner-occupied um, properties, usually defined to include properties that are occupied by an heir to a deceased owner or um, a spouse of, of the original owner or some other kind of family member. Um, and generally, the lender, uh, when on, upon filing the foreclosure complaint, the lender certifies the property as owner-occupied um, or not, and they have this information based on their correspondence with the um, mortgagor. And if the homeowner disagrees, usually there's a procedure for um, disputing that. And I included um, Philadelphia's form that the homeowner has to file if, if the um, 
foreclosure is improperly certified, it's not owner occupied. I actually just want to take a step back and see how many of you are from counties where there is a diversion program in effect. Okay, so a good number. So a lot of you are going to be very familiar with this. Um, if there's something you want to uh, comment on that your county does differently, just feel free to jump in. Um, but I'm just going to go through um, some of the other components now and mention the, the options um, for how you can set up a program. Um, there, one, one question, um, in addition to covering owner-occupied properties, is at what point are those properties and foreclosures going to be covered? Um, in Philadelphia, both what we call day forward and day backward cases are covered. Day forward means um, those cases that were filed after the program took effect. Um, those cases enter the program as soon as the foreclosure is filed. Um, and the conference is set up before um, before the case can move forward. Um, day backward are those cases that are going to go to sheriff sale where the, the lender is scheduled a sheriff sale um, and the homeowner didn't yet have an opportunity to participate in conciliation, often because the case is um, old, an old case that was begun before the conciliation program took effect. Those homeowners have an opportunity um, to file a certificate of participation and come into court and have a conference and try to work things out with the lender before the case goes to sale. So. We're catching them both at the beginning and at the end of the court case. Um, uh, my understanding is that most of the programs in effect now um, only catch those day forward cases, although there are a couple other programs that catch it both um, when the case is filed and also um, when there's a motion for summary judgment um, or judgment on the pleadings or before sheriff sale. So that, that's an, um, an area where programs can differ. Um, in Allegheny mm -hmm. County now, um, there's some sort of pro se motion floating around that judges are signing, to, sort of to my surprise, saying that um, we'll stop the sale and put them in the diversion program. Oh. Um, and so the lenders aren't too happy about it. But, and they're not <laughs> alleging any real reason or anything. They're just sort of saying, I want to be in there. And you know, I'm surprised, but the motions go to a bunch of different judges. The conciliations are all held by one judge in Allegheny County. So I think they just think, oh, that sounds okay. Uh, and I don't know how long this will last, but for now, pretty much anybody can get in there at any point. That is interesting. Um, so it could happen organically, too, even if <laughs> it's not set up that way. Um, the important notice, I just I wanted to mention there are a couple different ways of serving it. Most of the counties um, serve it with the complaint and put it in, you know, in as large type as possible that you may get help with your mortgage and in order to participate you need to call this hotline. Um, there was at least one county um, that was sending the notice after the complaint was filed, just sending it by mail, and it was much easier to disregard at that point. In Philadelphia, it's actually mailed and served with the um, with the complaint, so people are, um, it's, it's catching people's attention that way. Um, one big uh, variation in programs are whether they're opt-in or opt-out. Um, opt-in programs require the homeowner to take some sort of affirmative step to become, to um, get into the diversion program. Most of the um, counties out there have opt in programs where the homeowner, no conference is going to be scheduled, no stay is going to issue unless the homeowner takes the step of calling the hotline and meeting with, um, usually with the housing counselor. Um, in Philadelphia and Northampton, um, the homeowner is automatically in the program unless they essentially opt out by not showing up to the scheduled um, conference. And all the programs have some sort of hotline. Um, in a place like Philadelphia or Allegheny County, um, the hotline feeds into a whole bunch of different housing counseling agencies. Um, our hotline is um, funded by the city and run by um, Philadelphia Legal Assistance, our sister um, legal services organization. In Allegheny County, the Department of Economic Development to fund it and run it? Or? It's a, yeah, it's, it's a county agency. It's just one of the departments of Allegheny County. Um, in some other counties, I've seen the number on the notice is just one of the housing counseling agencies that has agreed to take on that role. Um, it may be a county that only has one or two housing counseling agencies, so the hotline is essentially just straight calling the, um, the housing counseling agency. Um, in a couple of counties, the number is the legal services um, agency number because they are coordinating um, the participation in the program. 
Um, then the homeowner meets with the housing counselor, develops a proposal, a workout proposal, which includes a budget and some sort of um, and a proposal as to how the case should be worked out. Um, it, it could be that the, the homeowner should be eligible for HAMP or HEMAP or some other kind of modification or a proposal that they have, um, that the lender give the homeowner more time to get letters of administration and work out an estate or um, give them a forbearance while they get a job or whatever it may be. But the, you know, all the programs require the homeowner with the help of a housing counselor or attorney to submit a proposal ahead of time, ahead of the conference. And, um, and then a conference is, is held. Um, in Philadelphia, we have conferences every Thursday um, in one particular courtroom, and it's 100 or a couple hundred <laughs> cases a week, um, you know, maybe 100 in the morning and 100 in the afternoon. Um, and they're all called at the same time, and essentially um, everybody comes to this one big courtroom and um, meets up. We, you, you check in um, at the front desk, and we have a, a desk with housing counselors available um, to talk to people who either contacted them before or never contacted a housing counselor before. We have um, a table run by Philadelphia VIP, our pro bono coordinating agency with volunteer attorneys who are there ready to um, assist people the day of the conference. And then we have a whole side of the room where lenders counsel is sitting. Um, so the parties try to work things out, um, see if there are any updates or any agreements that can be reached um, by that date, and if not, if there's some kind of disagreement, they feel like they need a mediator. Um, we have what's known as judge pro tems or JPTs, who are volu volunteer um, mediators who are supposed to meet with the parties and see if they can reach some kind of agreement, or if not, uh, make a recommendation to the court. And um, we have one particular common pleas judge who's overseeing the program, Judge um, Rizzo, make a recommendation to her as to what um, order she should sign off on. And the main leverage that judges have in these cases is continuing them and extending the stay so so the um, lender can't get past, essentially can't get past the um, program until they participate in, in some meaningful way and see if, if an agreement can be reached. Um, I want to make sure that I give Kathy enough time, but um, one big uh, area of difference between some of the programs in the state is whether they include conferences or not. There are three um, conciliation or diversion programs that don't include court conferences. And um, what we hear is that those are not the most effective. They're not effective because you don't have the leverage of the court ever hearing anything about the case and having the opportunity to extend the stay um, and put pressure on the lenders. I mean, if you have an automatic, some of the programs just have an automatic stay of 30 or 60 days from when the person contacts the housing counselor. And the idea is that'll give them extra time to work with the lender. But as you know, <laughs> with your clients, 30 or 60 days is usually not enough time um, to work something out with the lender. So those aren't um, particularly meaningful programs. So we would encourage you, if your um, county is considering setting up a program, or if you're in one of the counties that has a program like that doesn't have conferences, to really advocate for there to be um, conferences with court supervision um, to, give, to give that power. Um, I mentioned we have um, pro bono attorneys that pick up cases the day of um, the conference. Um, some counties don't have much of a pro bono bar, and some have a pretty well organized one. I know there's one county where the judge, pretty small docket, personally calls lawyers and um, asks them to assist in those cases um, where the judge thinks the person needs representation. He said they've been stepping up and doing it. Um, I know I've been told in Lycoming, anyone here from Lycoming County? Yeah, I've been told in Lycoming County they managed to assign a pro bono attorney to every case ahead of time before the conference. That sounds great, but we just, with our numbers, we, we um, can't do that. But the participation of pro bono attorneys is very helpful. Um, and then usually the outcome of the conference is recorded via some sort of form order. And I have samples from some different counties in here. Um, it's like check a box usually. Um, you know, an agreement has been reached and the foreclosure will be discontinued. Um, there, the parties need more time to reach an agreement, and the case will be continued to a certain date. Um, you know, the defendant is going to file for bankruptcy or, or um, a lot of different outcomes. Um, and those can be recorded by, and usually are being tracked in some way by the court to see whether the program is being effective and what sort of outcomes it's producing. Um, and I guess I'd, I'm interested, 
Kathy's going to tell you more about how to set up, because um, she was involved in setting up um, Allegheny County's program, how that process works. It's a collaborative process um, between a lot of interested parties. Hi, yeah, I'm Kathy Martin. I'm with Neighborhood Legal Services in Pittsburgh, and um, we're the warm and fuzzy portion of the program. Uh, this is uh, these diversion programs are a little change of pace for for me at least, um, because it allowed uh, us to play a part in setting up kind of a cooperative venture and legal services lawyers. Uh, I, that that wasn't how I saw my role in the in the process prior to this, um, and still I have cases where I'm litigating the issues. But I have to say that I became really a fan of these diversion programs as the process went along so that's really the, the the secret point of this is to hope to uh, convert some more fans to this um, so it depends what's going on in your county um, you may if you already have a program obviously then then you're done although you might want to stay involved and and help change it and improve it as it goes along uh, but if if you don't have a program um, you have to think who who are the people that you need to talk to um, from the legal services point of view you want to have someone who's uh, enthusiastic about the process and um, that sounds obvious but when we started to get involved there were a couple attorneys from my office who turned out to be you know not that hot on it um, and so when I saw that I just kind of thought, well, no, well, this isn't going to work. You know, if we're not supportive of it, um, how are we going to play much of a useful role? So, so that's number one. Um, don't just assign someone to it and, and hope it works okay. Um, make sure it's someone who, who is, um, you know, going to be enthusiastic and a supporter of it. Um, local conditions are obviously very significant, as Rachel was saying. Um, some counties um, don't have housing counselors who are physically present, some counties maybe you won't. So the kind of program you wanna push for is going to depend on the resources that are available to you. Um, in Philadelphia, I was always jealous because they were always talking about all this money they had and funding they had. Well, in Allegheny County, Nobody had any money for anything. Um, legal services didn't get money for this. The courts, you know, nobody had special funding to set up this project. So, you know, we're a pretty big county, but we were able to set up, I think, a pretty good program. Um, and everyone just decided, all right, we're going to do this. We think it's important, and we are going to devote some of our own resources to it. So um, you need to know what those resources are. Um, you need to know who is going to participate in the process. It's going to come from the court, uh, and essentially, um, but they may not start it. They may not be the one. So you may need to be the one to contact the a local judge whom you know to be friendly to the idea, or the president judge, or whoever, um, and uh, um, you know just work with them. In Allegheny County, and I don't know if this was because we were particularly contentious bunch, but um, as the, <laughs> the homeowner advocates met separately, we decided that it was important for us to present a united front, I guess because it's a big enough county that there are a lot of different agencies. Um, the housing counselors often have somewhat um, competitive uh, relationship with each other uh, because they're, they're all trying to get the clients, they're trying to get the funding. So we decided that we needed to uh, speak with one voice. So we would have meetings and hash things out uh, and then we would present our official view of the world um, to, to the court. So I think that was necessary for us Hopefully it wouldn't be necessary everywhere, but it's something to consider because you don't want um, people to be able to discount what you're saying uh, by saying, oh yeah, well, this other person who is also a homeowner advocate doesn't agree with that. They're telling me something very different. So you, that, that's important, I think, to, um, to present a united front. Um, we, I would say, don't overthink it. We tried to anticipate everything. You know, I, I'm, I like to be organized, so I was forever coming up with lovely little forms for them to use and things like that. And, um, and the judge finally, this Judge James in Allegheny County was a president judge at the time, and he said, and I think he was right, you know, we can't anticipate every 
possibility. Um, so we're just going to have to start with something and see how it goes. And I think that's important. Um, so it, it's better to have something than the perfect thing, I think, because you won't come up with the perfect thing. Um, one issue that was came up kind of after the fact, um, it made me realize that lawyers are much more aware of the ideas of confidentiality than, than other people are, and there was some conflict between um, what the lawyers thought their role would be in this and, and what other people expected of them. I mean, we would be told, okay, well now, you know, we'll send you these clients, and then you tell us what happened. You tell us what you're going to do. You tell us if they don't show up. You tell, and we were, no, we're not, none of that. You know, um, so so you have to be be sure that that people don't um, think that that's an important part of the process. You just have to be very direct about that and and say, you know, you're not going to do that. Um, one thing. Um, just looking at my own notes, I said, remember you're not the boss of it. Um, this was um, somewhat hard, I think, for me, um, because if you're used to sort of organizing and, and deciding how things are going to be, um, then you want people to do it the way you think it should be done. Um, this is a court process. This, we are, we're, have been fortunate across the state in being invited to participate, uh, but, we, and so the, I think, important role of legal services lawyers has been um, recognized, and that's been great. But you know, we are not in charge of this. Uh, we, but we have a really um, good opportunity to express our opinions and participate in the process. So I think it's important to take advantage of that. Um, don't promise more than you can deliver. I think I was nervous. Um, and one reason I w went to all kinds of meetings was I was afraid that somehow they'd end up saying, okay, we'll just tell everyone to call legal services. And I thought, we, we are not in a position to take on that extra burden. So um, there are some, I, th I think it's Southwest Legal Services, where th that's, those are the programs where the uh, homeowners call legal services. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. Um, I wanted to make sure that wasn't going to happen, and maybe, you know, I don't know why it works for your program. I didn't think it would work for our program. Um, and so, but there are many useful things you can do. Um, one of them is to offer training. Legal services lawyers are usually, um, you know, set up to do that, CLE provider usually. Um, and so we, we put on a training for Allegheny County, and there are some materials in the handout, um, I included the agenda, which shows you the topics that we thought were important, um, and also the table of contents, which shows what materials we provided. So I just put those in there so that you can see it. If anybody wants any of this, contact me. Uh, excuse me. Allergies. Um, anyway, there are... Um, so, so people have done a lot of this work already, so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. But I do think it's important to um, offer whatever services you can uh, that will help the process um, proceed. In Allegheny County, um, it turned out, and I assume that this is true everywhere, it's really all about the housing counselors. They're, they're the important players um, in, in these diversion programs um, because that's where the homeowners are going. Um, and so the case, if it comes to the lawyer, comes a little later in the game. Um, so I think um, we thought that pro bono lawyers, for example, would play a more significant part in Allegheny County than it turns out that they have. But that's different from Philadelphia, where, where they do. So um, you just have to, as I say, see, see how you set up your program, how you want it to be. But um, the housing counselors have, for the most part in Allegheny County, been the ones to go to the conciliations with the homeowner. Um, the judges have even, if there's a lawyer there, the judges have sometimes said, I don't want to hear anything you have to say at this point. Um, you know, if we don't settle this, 
then, then it's your turn, then you go on to the litigation. But it's been the, the housing counselors uh, who have gone to the conciliations and presented the situation to the judge. So, um, so it's important to have a good relationship with your housing counselors so that um, you can work together. Um, if a case is referred to us, I always contact the housing counselor, talk to them, see what's going on, make sure we're defining our roles. You don't want there to be a gap and you think they're doing this thing and they think you're doing it. Just, you know, spell it out. Um, so I don't, I don't go to the conciliations much anymore um, unless I think there's some legal issue that I'm afraid my client's going to be kicked out of the conciliation program and I need to make an argument as to why they still should be included. Um, and then the only, really the only other thing I wanted to mention is that um, even after you have something set up, uh, you want to stay involved. In Allegheny County, I asked the, um, the agency that was staffing the helpline um, was having meetings with the housing counselors just to see how it was going. I asked to be included in those meetings so that I could hear what the housing counselors were saying and understand the whole process because the lawyers aren't involved in the whole process. So I think that it was helpful for me to see what was going on. Um, I would say that on balance, certainly, I've found this to be like a really valuable process for clients. Um, it, it puts a hold on things at a time when that's often critical. Um, it puts pressure on the lender to talk to the uh, homeowner. Um, and that is something that was missing. Um, and I think Don mentioned that there had been an attempt to get a statewide uh, requirement that with any, uh, the filing of any foreclosure complaint that there would be basically a certification by the plaintiff uh, that they had complied with HAMP. We didn't get that, um, but really these diversion programs um, are much better if you can have it um, because it uh, provides uh, some pressure on the lender and you know there are just so many millions of these loans that are under review that what you're always trying to do basically is get some particular attention for your individual case um, and that's what these diversion programs provide uh, so you know it doesn't solve every problem but it can be a pretty amazing solution for an individual um, and when that's what you, you know, when that's what your job is, then uh, this really helps you do it. So I met my promise to Sam that <coughs> we would uh, wrap this up quickly. Um, I don't know if anyone has questions. The, um, you know, Rachel has more information about the sort of the um, components of, of the programs uh, across the state. She's kind of the most knowledgeable person about that. And that's maybe what you have questions about. I went through it kind of quickly. I realized one of the things I sort of skipped over, I mentioned how Philadelphia handles it, but there are counties where a judge will have hearings once a month and, and um, the cases will go in front of that particular judge personally because the volume of pressure isn't as bad as in Philadelphia and that seems to work for smaller counties. Um, and also just to address the issue of um, what they're interested in hearing about and what they aren't at um, conciliation cases. We've also found that the lenders counsel and to a certain extent the court is resistant to addressing um, things like the document issues in the conciliation context. Um, certain defenses they see as litigation defenses that aren't mm -hmm. um, the same as something like HAMP where you're arguing whether the person should qualify for a modification. So it can be very helpful in um, making sure the person gets a fair shake for a modification, but sometimes not as helpful um, when you actually just <laughs> need to deal with another issue. But we, we have found it helpful also in those cases. We have many cases that have an estate component to um, also putting the brakes on the case while, while the estate issue is worked out. And, um, and in some ways we found it more helpful for those cases that we aren't taking on for full representation. And we don't take everybody who comes through our intake and some of the cases we have to reject and sometimes we'll reject them because we know that person is going to get um, their issues addressed through the conciliation with the help of a good housing counselor or a volunteer attorney the day of, um, which is something that didn't exist before we had the conciliation program. Uh, one thing we did, we, we got permission from our judges to enter a limited 
um, appearance for the sake of the conciliation only. Um, and so in the materials, I have a, the um, limited entry of appearance on page 257. That's the one we use in Allegheny County. Um, and that, I think, uh, was reassuring to us and, and to the pro bono lawyers who have helped um, to, so that they don't feel like they're taking on some kind of unknowable years long uh, set of litigation just by virtue of entering their appearance. This makes it clear that you can do it just for the conciliation. Um, our policy usually is that we'll, we'll handle anything at that level just because we wanted to see what was going on. Um, and, um, but we certainly do not represent every, every defendant in a mortgage foreclosure litigation. So um, that's, I think, a, a good um, kind of reassurance for legal services lawyers that they wouldn't be committing themselves to something that really wasn't going to be feasible. And if you have any questions about um, the programs, the summaries that I have in here, or if you want to know who to get in touch with in a, another county um, that has a program, I also have a list um, in my office of contacts in every single county, including the who, who would be the ones to talk to about a diversion program, including Rachel, the counties that have Rachel them. Knows everything. <laughs> no. I don't know. I don't have it all up here, but I do have it in my computer. So feel free to contact me. That's just as good. Um, Okay, so thank you, and Sam wants me to say there, there's concluding remarks, um, so I'm not sure who's making them. Uh, <laughs> maybe Sam? Okay, thank you. <laughs>